Well, we're back for another edition of Carl's Corner and welcoming back for the ter- third time yeah, on Carl's great. Corner. I want to thank you so much, Frankie, for yeah. coming back. Shows me I'm doing something okay that uh, yeah. for you to come back for the third time. But uh, thanks yeah. for coming back. I know we're doing a monthly right now. And yeah. for people who are just tuning in for the first time, uh, we have your website out here. Frankie, just do a little bit of your background again, and uh, we could go into your recent successes and your upcoming schedule. Yeah, I got you. Well, first off, thank you for having me back, Carl. I love love being here. You know, it's super fun to just be able to come on and talk and just talk about me. And uh, the best thing I ever heard was uh, if you let people – people love when you let them talk about themselves, so – I love it. So, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I'm Frankie Ray, I'm a country music singer songwriter, based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Originally from Blackwood, New Jersey. Um, kind of spent my whole life around music in different forms. Did a lot of musical theater as a kid, uh, and that kind of taught me the performing aspect. Um, and now I'm currently at college, Belmont University, uh, in downtown Nashville. Uh, about just about done my second year of college, so we're getting pretty close. But um. But yeah, I'm I'm here now and been having a lot of great opportunities come up, a lot of great things happening for me, and um, having the honor to be able to be on the Carl's Corner podcast for a third time, to be able to just kind of talk about that. It's uh, it's super fun and happy to be here, and I'm happy that you guys are here with us right now. So, well, thank you for yeah. being here. Also, of course, buddy. So we actually have the tab of your website. Yep, and it's an amazing picture that. I think we showed the black and white picture last time that yeah. your uncle took, yep. and they're all in Jersey, correct? Yep, that's the that's the beautiful uh, landscape of New Jersey in the middle of winter, right there. <laughs> it's about December time. December, yes, January. and if people people are looking to do find out more about you, they could just go to this yep. website for you. Yep. So FrankieRayMusic.com is is has been up and running for about a month now, and it has been collecting a lot a lot of love. And we're super, super happy about that. Um, it, it's very easy to navigate. I didn't want anything too difficult to navigate. So uh, we've got the home button. We've got the about button. And uh, that's just a fun little thing about me. You go ahead and read it. It really just gets into the depths about who I am and, and what I do. Um, the home page has a couple different links that you guys can click on as well, uh, including past uh, Carl's Corner podcasts. So make sure you guys... Go check that out. This one will be up there with it as well once we are done. Um, but, yeah, fun little thing to read in the About section there. Try to update as much as I can. Um, the next one, I forget. Go ahead and scroll up there. Let's see what we got next. There we go. Next one's going to be the social media clicker. It's very simple. It, it takes you straight to all my social medias. Um, right now I think it's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and and facebook those are my some of my most active especially the first ones being instagram and facebook i'm very active on those best way to keep up with what frankie ray is doing um and also hear about when i'll be on the the podcast and such got some you know up-to-date stuff and always pinned at the top of my instagram page and facebook page will be upcoming show calendar so it's the best way to find out where i'll be I'll be posting the New Jersey residency calendar next to that one coming up pretty soon. But right now that's the uh, the soon to be updated Nashville calendar for the next uh, about two weeks or so. Um, So since the last time we talked now, that one is the, uh, what was that? The friends in low places. That was right before friends in low places. uh, Yep. Yeah. Tell us how that went. So friends in low places bar, they are some of the nicest people in the world that, I, that I've met so far in the industry. Um, they really just, they treated us well. They were super supportive, really easy to work with. Uh, the Wednesday before the show was when we met Carl and um, for, our, for the second podcast that I was on. And, um, you know, the nerves were, were kicking in. It was a place that I definitely wanted to impress, you know, Um so me and the guys, we got there. We got there super early, a lot earlier than we needed to be. We sat around. We watched one of the guys that went up before us. He was incredible. Um, and we set up and did our sound check. And first couple songs were a little rocky because we were getting used to the stage, getting used to the environment. Uh, Broadway's got its own 
its own environment, I would say. You know, we're just getting used to things, um, but we did it. And, you know, four hours went by like that. You know, and we just we just left with smiles on our faces, you know. And for not too long after that, um, they reached out to us, and they want us to come back, you know, um, try to get a steady rotation going. And we couldn't be more happier um, and very thankful that, to have that opportunity. Um, they recently called us. We, we won't necessarily be able to go back until after the residency, the New Jersey residency ends, ends off. But we, um, we were able to, we were just, we just got a call that they had a cancellation on April 20, 29th, Monday, April 29th. So we'll be up there 7 to 10 PM. It's a Monday night. Um, and it is going to be just as fun. You know, it's going to be new songs. We're going to whip out some new songs up there. Some of my personal songs we've been working on, uh, but that's that that calendar is soon to be updated. So you'll see, you'll see the updated version tonight. So it looks like you're going to be there in two nights, though. Correct? That's going to be a full night. Yeah. So uh, we go to the Why Not Saloon Friday the nineteenth, uh, which is two nights from now uh, at um, at the Why Not. Uh, they love we love performing there. We love having a good time. This one's going to be a full band performance. So be on the lookout for that. That's eight to twelve. Uh, that's 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Free admission, and uh, yeah, tons of fun. Chef Ben will be cooking it up in the in the kitchen as always. Incredible chef. Uh, the bar will be open, and um, yeah, they're great people over there at the Why Not. Um, we'll be there Friday night, and then um, the 26th, April the 26th, is another acoustic set at the Why Not. That's 4 to 6 p.m., and then that Monday, that following Monday, we'll be friends in low places. Uh, also, this Saturday, the 20th. Um, April, April 20th, I have a writer's round at the Curb Cafe here at Belmont University. Um, so that one's going to be a lot of fun. That's 6 to 7 p.m. So if you're uh, if you're free, it's free admission. It's, got, it's at a Chick-fil-A. The, the stage is built into this Chick-fil-A. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So come get some food and uh, listen to good Did you say this is in a Chick-fil-A? Yeah, they, they have the Curb Cafe like stage in the dining hall of a, of a Chick-fil-A. Well, what could be better? That. That's not like, wait a yeah. second. When I hear Chick Fil A, yeah. that, that's it's, interesting. It's, it's funny, dude. The funny thing is, like, there's stages in Nashville everywhere. There's there's a Taco Bell down on Broadway. They have they play classical music. They have a stage with a piano and and a cellist and violinist. They do other stuff, but but there's there's stages anywhere you go in Nashville. There'd be one in the gas station if there could be. You know, somebody's setting up. There's music everywhere. That's something you don't get in Jersey. I'm, I don't know if you get it in California. I don't know what it's like over there, but there's stages you know, everywhere. California has changed a lot. Obviously, 60s yeah. and 70s, we well, down, you know, uh, Sunset with all the bars yeah. where all the big, you know, rock bands came out of, you know, originally The Doors and ACDC, yeah. Van Halen, and they all yeah. came out of that area. And even the girl bands, the Go-Go's, the Bangles and things yep. like that. And it's changed. It's just, you know, a lot of cover people. Not, I don't think the, the music is changed. If you're anywhere for ground zero for music now, yeah. it's Nashville. Yeah. Because we all know the greatest, you know, the highest performance person on the planet right now. Her parents were smart 20 years ago. They took her to Nashville. You know, yeah. we, all, we all know about Taylor Swift. So that's what they did. If anywhere, you're in a great place. Yeah. It's Nashville's an awesome place. Um, I think the only thing I talk down on Nashville for is its food. The food sucks out here. <laughs> but I'm from well, the East Coast. You can say that about anywhere besides Jersey yeah. and Philly, right? Yeah. And I, I saw you posted something uh, on your Facebook, I want to say, of the pizza. Yes, the best pizza in, in California. Yeah, looks pretty now, good. It took me a while. I was already here almost two years. And then one day about four years ago, I was dying for an old-fashioned yeah. chicken farm. I yeah, there you go. And but I heard New York style, and I went, and it was phenomenal. And the yeah. guy was from uh, the Bronx, Bonjournos, and oh, technically yeah. we talked about things. He fries the chicken cutlets right there, and he gets his bread from uh, from Philly. So, oh. <laughs> so he gets the dough, and he just and it was uh, you know so it was amazing. So I went there yesterday yeah. after I had something to do with my uh, photography. You know, I want to move, you know, I'm going to go, and I, you know, I'm glad 
but you got to find it. There's there's places, but they're not like you know yeah. every corner in Jersey. You know you're going to get good yeah. pizza. You know. So, but speaking uh, of that, my 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 audio engineer uh, Neil Meta, um, he's from, originally from Illinois. He's a guy who's been working on my project with me, and he um he comes up to me and he goes, he goes, there's this place I want you to try. It's it's got some of the best pizza. Now he's around you know from around Chicago, so he either knows pizza or he doesn't. It's kind of hit or miss with Chicago. <laughs> but um, I said, yeah, it was a deep dish. You know, I'm making fun of him and all that. And and he goes, he goes, nah, this is like, it's that thin crust. And when you say thin crust to somebody from Jersey or you know Philadelphia, I immediately think, oh, it's it's you know it's that thin, real thin, you know, bulk Because to us, regular pizza is is what it's you the have. Stuff that the Domino's sells. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that one. It's the checkerboard one. Yeah. So. So I was like, I don't want to, I don't want no thin crust pizza. I want real pizza. You know, I want regular, a regular pie. He goes, no, nah, this is, this is the stuff. So he takes me to this place called Pizza Perfect. Now, judging by the name, I didn't even want to be in that place. But when I tell you, it was a Nashville 8.2 right there. It was real good. In Jersey, in Jersey, it'd be like 7.8. But it was a Nashville 8.2 on the rating scale out of 10. It, it, it was it was decent. It was cooked right. It was crispy. It didn't flop. Cheese was melted. Man, it was good. It was beautiful. And it's so hard to find stuff like that around here, though. You know, it really is. I'm a margarita fan. Margarita pizza. Oh, they did it right. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's it's hard to find. I'm trying to pull like up that. my Facebook page with that, with, oh, with, with that picture yeah. of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. And we totally, we did the same thing today. We went to a bagel shop and my buddy who's also from Chicago, he goes, he goes, you know, they got the best New York style bagels you'll ever find in the South. And I'm like, yeah, okay. We went to K&S bagels. I'll give it to them. I watched them make them right there in front of me. So I got to give it to them. It was, it was a good bagel, <laughs> but, um, but the pizza, man, I love margarita pizza. I love plain pizza. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta make it right. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no, Right or there's no, uh, it's just you can't go wrong with pizza, man. <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta do it right. There's the there's the post. It finally found it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I had a friend of mine that could actually smell the grease coming off the pe the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> it looks delicious. See, Frank, you really, wear a car that's a good man, pizza. great. We could be talking about your music, but then all of a sudden we talk about food. Oh, right? dude, I have no, I have no problem talking about anything you want to talk about. <laughs> uh, the yeah. funny thing I saw, and the thing I knew, this is how I knew this was a good pizza place. Those three shakers right there, cracked pepper, parmesan, and oregano. If you don't got those on the table, table, it's not a real pizza place. No matter how fancy. Well, I have to get it. A quick story about maybe two years ago. I was at some place on a Sunday afternoon, and I was my this place was too far away. If I can get some local, I see another thing online say New York. But as soon as I walk in the place, I see the conveyor belt oven. Oh, yeah. that's ah. my flag. And so I go in there, and it's like four o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. And I said, "Well, you know, they said they sell slices." I said, "All right, I want two slices." And the girl looks at me. We stopped selling slices at three o'clock. I go, "Why?" Oh, because my bad. You know, some stupid lame expert. They say, "Okay," and how you know us in Jersey and Philly, we were considered having an attitude. So I had. I had the uh, the menu in my hand. I gave it back to her. And I said, all right, thanks, anyone. I'm leaving. She goes, you're leaving? Because most Californians would say, okay, get me this or get me that. I said, no. Do you?" And I said kind of loud. Everybody's looking at me. Do you have what I want? No. I'm leaving. And they were shocked that I left. <laughs> so, you know, it's the difference. It's you know, why would you stop selling slices? Yeah, man. So anyway. <sighs> Places just do that stuff, dude. Like after after like the COVID and everything, like the pandemic, people like all these places stopped staying open, you know, past in their normal hours. So like it was funny. I went home for something and I went, Oh yeah, this place is open 24 hours, right? And they were like, No, they they close at eight. Close at eight. I ain't eating at no eight o'clock. I'm a ten o'clock or later kind of guy. Like you know, I'm a late well, night. Yeah. I'm a night the owl. Biggest thing, it's a shame that the diners. I grew up with the diners that they're all there. Nobody's twenty four hours anymore. Yep, they're all closed at ten. 
I do the miss Wawa. Steiner? Well, my, Wawa is the only place open 24 hours. Correct. But at least, you know, you can open. still go up to the uh, – close to where you're from, the, the Philly Diner. They're still yeah. open until about 11. They still have the bar. But, but well, yeah, Meadows, I was yeah, – Meadows Diner. But uh, all right, let's get, off, let's get off of food and back to your uh, career. Let's do it. Let's do it. We got to get back into it. <laughs> we so, got to focus, uh, Carl. <laughs> well, you know, we got to do one just on our – but you know what we could do? You know, if I do come back in the summertime, we could do one yeah. just with food, showing all your I'm friends, all you know, wherever. We're, we're, and actually, your uncle. I don't know where he got that roast yeah. pork for that New Year's Eve. I know it was played, but – because really, I'm dying for roast, real roast pork sandwich out He might have made it, dude. To be honest with you, man, he can make anything. That guy is an incredible chef. Incredible. Oh, he's, chef. he's great. Incredible guy, too. So, yeah, All right. Where else do you want to go? Let's go back here. But yeah. So let's um let's talk about the studio stuff. I think we we covered all the shows that are coming up. And we talked about Friends of Low Places. Let's talk about what's going on in the studio. If, uh, if that's – you got that picture. I think it's on the Instagram. I'll let you pull that up, no, and then I'll try this one. Uh, I talk about it until I give me a give me a yeah. second behind yeah, the scenes you. to uh, get it All set right. up. Yeah, I got you. So, Frankie Ray and his and his big band, um, which I'll get more. I'll explain that more in a minute. Um, I was I had the incredible opportunity to. Uh, you know, I found some engineers and um, record my own music. So this is probably the first time the public's going to hear about it. Um, and I wanted to save it for this for this moment. So Frankie Ray is releasing music. Uh, it's going to happen during the summer. Uh, I don't we have estimated times right now, estimated around July and then September. Um, the first in July, August time will be a single called Hello, Catherine. Um, which is a song that I've performed live at different shows a few times. Um, but we're super excited about releasing Hello, Catherine. It's a song that has no meaning. Um, it doesn't necessarily have a story. Um, it just kind of, it's one of those storytelling songs that I think that I've gotten a lot of great feedback for, and I'm super excited, and I, I think a lot of people are going to like it. Um, I had some of the most incredible musicians uh, in the studio with me that day. We had Drew Halpin on the drums. Um, from him, we had Bill, uh, Garrett Olson, who's my bassist. Had him up now, there. Is that, are these pictures from the studio now? That I got? Yep. So these are the pictures from the okay. studio. Um, in these pictures, you'll see. Yeah, this is this is perfect. Uh, you, we had Billy Bellino and Colin O'Connor on the guitar uh, and piano. Billy did a little bit of piano. Uh, we had Neil Meta sitting on the piano there in the left picture there. I had Harrison Eason on the steel guitar. He's playing a 1977, I believe, 1977 uh, uh, push and pull, push pull uh, steel. The thing is beautiful and it sounds incredible. And then we have Tessa Tessa Dalton on um, on fiddle and just an incredible powerhouse of musicians sitting in that room. Um, you'll see the top left picture is a picture of me sitting with my talkback microphone and my notebook. And I basically sat in the middle of the room as they played around me. And I just kind of told, you know, I told them what, what I wanted and the things that I wanted to hear. And just to have the opportunity to sit there and listen to all these instruments being played and being mastered around me. Um, it, there's nothing else like it. You know, when you have a moment where people are there to listen to you and listen to the things that are in your mind and put it out into the instrument that they master and perfect. It's such an honor. And it's, is there it's any such video a great being shot during these sessions. So as of right now, we have not, we have not released any video or anything. Um, but when the songs come out, we're hoping to have some, some cool shots released as promos. Um, and then we have were shot in the studio people. or outside of the studio. Yeah. These were pictures taken in the studio. So these are all in the studio right here. Cool. Um, videos will probably be outside studio stuff, or we may book the studio to kind of recreate some stuff. But um, we didn't have the video camera up, you know, at our disposable the day of disposal the day of, but we did have 
our phones and people were taking pictures. So as time comes, there will be a lot more pictures, but this is just kind of the sneak peek of it. Um, like I said, Hello, Catherine, the single, that'll be out sometime in July. Um, and then the EP with four other songs on top of having, it's a five song EP. One of them will be Hello, Catherine again, and four other new songs that I'm going to, I'm going to hold the name of until we get closer to having to market that. Um, so how will they be released? We're five songs. Uh, how will they be released now in this new so, era now? There's no yeah. record, there's no CD, mm -hmm. or you know, how are you going to release mm -hmm. them? So I'm planning to um, – I'm going to release probably through DistroKid. DistroKid allows uh, us artists to kind of release our music uh, to all platforms. Uh, you know, you basically buy a package, and in that package it has X amount of platforms that it releases to. Um I'll be releasing, you'll be able to find it on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. Anywhere you listen or stream music, it'll be there. Um, along with that, I have a CD burner. So I'm going to burn CDs um, and sell them at my shows. Uh, it's probably, it's the cheapest way to do CDs. Um, I'm going to print out, you know, CD art for it and put them in the cases. Um but hopefully, you know, those will come out good and I'll be able to sell those at shows so people can enjoy them. Um, on top of that, I'm looking in the process of possibly getting some vinyl cut too. Um, that's a little bit more pricey, but <laughs> it's uh, for me, I think it would be really cool to have a couple vinyl sitting around. So looking at the possibility of cutting a few of them, you know, there'll be a limited time sale, maybe do a giveaway with one or something. Um but yeah, you'll be able to, we'll, we'll have music everywhere. There'll be multiple different opportunities to buy it. Give me the dates or again. Listen. You said July, yeah. June or July. So we're looking, so for the single uh, Hello Catherine, we're looking around July. Um, right now the estimated date is July 1st. That could change. And that's not the, the complete, you know, final released uh, set date. But that's just the estimated time to be on the lookout for a, a single by Frankie Ray. And then the EP itself, uh, with all five songs together, that'll hopefully be sometime in September. Um, but you know, we are we're, we're trucking along to get it done, and it's coming out really good. Well, you know, they have a thing called CD, you know, release parties and you know, yep. events. Yeah. So you know, I might possibly be coming back in July if your yeah. you know the schedule permits and everything goes to that yeah. way. It'd be great to be a part of that and actually do. Yeah. And of course, Carl, you're doing it for a release yeah. date. Yep. Uh, for the for the EP, we're going to plan. I'm looking into a couple theaters right now in Nashville. So in September, um, hopefully do a big release party in Nashville and and do something fun for that. So it'll be a fun you know show that just let all the people that want to you know that's show so much love and support, give them a chance to come out, have a good time very interactive performance where at the end of the show, I'm going to walk around and thank everybody for coming out. Everybody will get a chance to, to meet me in the band. And, um, and that show will hopefully be Frankie Ray's big band, which as of right now, we have Frankie Ray and his band, which is um, me singing and, and, you know, acoustic guitar. We have one, one to two guitarists, depending on the, on the venue. And then we have a drummer and a bassist in Frankie Ray's big band. It's all of that stuff I just named along with the steel player playing live, the fiddle player playing live, and the pianist coming out playing live too. So we have a wide, wide variety of, of different types of shows that people will be able to see. So if you ever see a show that, that is marketed as Frankie Ray and his big band, that's definitely the one you should go see because that's, that's a big show with a lot of sound. Um, that means it's going to be, a, a, you know, a, a nice venue or something like that, an incredible venue at that. Um, and then if you see Frankie Ray and his band, don't be afraid to come out and see that too, because that show is just as energetic. It just it might just not have that extra sound, you know, but it's still just as incredible. Um, and then Frankie Ray acoustic. I mean, during the the New Jersey residency, almost all the shows are acoustic shows. Um, but honestly, in in some most of the time, that's that's how I love it. I love just having the New Jersey, you know, Frankie Ray, me and my guitar. You know what I mean? I love just performing because there's, there's something intimate about an acoustic set. Um, you know, one-on-one -on -one in a bar, it's loud. People are just listening to you in the background. 
yet some people interacting in different ways. And there's just something about having that guitar and being able to just present that performance with just me on my own, my own persona. That's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, but like I said, the full, the full band shows, that's just, you know, that just adds three to four people behind me that do just as good as a performance as you can get. And, um, so come out to the shows, come experience Frankie Ray and his band. I promise we will not let you down. Um, it's no matter what kind of performance you are seeing, it you will not be let down. That is our goal. Our goal is to make people happy, and um, and yeah, that's what we're here for. So, well, on that note, then, now I know you've only been performing not that long of a time, but what kind of following have you already received there in Nashville? Yeah. What kind of yeah. feedback have you gotten from the locals mm -hmm. from you? So, you know, in, you mentioned a little bit about in, that. Yeah, so I'll start with New Jersey. The big reason why we're doing this New Jersey residency is because I have such an incredible fan base of family, friends, um, people who have just picked me up over time, uh, seen me in past shows and such, um, and friends of friends who think, you know, have just been begging to go and see Frankie Ray. Um, this New Jersey residency, residency is a big chance for an opportunity for me to keep up with that fan base, to make sure everybody there knows I'm not forgetting about you guys. Um, just because I've left my, my home state and I'm running away from it doesn't mean I don't love it. Um, you know, I, I call myself and I've had people here in Nashville call me the Jersey cowboy. I, I, that stuck with me so, so long and probably will stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, I, I just, I, I think it's so funny, but um, I think it's a badge of honor to be honest with you. <laughs> I think it is, you know, because it, um, it, it's an honor for me, you know, cause to be able to, people not just recognize me as a cowboy, but to recognize me as the Jersey cowboy, they know where I'm from. And, and the fact that people outside of New Jersey are talking about New Jersey and they can see that there's some good that comes out of that state. Uh, you know, hopefully they see it in a good way, but to be able to see that, you know, that kind of that talk about New Jersey and people are like, huh, Jersey's got a country scene. Hell yeah, it does. And I'm, I'm a big part of it, you know, and I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for it, you know? So you know, talking about like the Jersey blues and all that stuff, man, I, I try to put that in my music and it, it does, it is coming out in, in the five song EP. Um, well, my, my question is now that obviously from Jersey has, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Bon Jovi, Springsteen and all mm -hmm. the Philly influence with the soul and the Philly sound. What got you into the country? I think there was a time where I was singing a lot of the Jersey blues and Can was realizing describe Jersey blues. The That's Jersey blues. I never, okay. heard, I never heard Jersey blues. So I never heard that. Term. It's kind of something that I didn't necessarily come up with, but I heard in a conversation with a few different musicians from New Jersey. And um, there isn't many songwriters in New Jersey, but there's people that write about New Jersey. And Springsteen, I mean, he says it best. It, it, it's the whole idea of he, he said in a performance once he goes, all my songs are about getting away, running away. I'm leaving this, this, you know, this crap hole of a state and I'm not turning back, you know, thunder road, all that stuff born to run. And then he goes, he pauses for a second. He goes, I currently live 10 minutes from my hometown. And, and he honestly, he understands that New Jersey, he, he speaks it perfectly by saying that New Jersey is a suicide trap. It's, it keeps you, it traps you, it keeps you stuck. You know what I mean? And there's something about it. It's, it's a New Jersey charm, right? And so that, that kind of songwriting, incorporating the, the hustle and bustle of New Jersey into music, it comes out in this sound that I like to call the Jersey blues. You know, there's, whether we like it or not, New Jersey is a beautiful state. It is, uh, it has been a great place uh, that that raised me. You know, there's there's an attitude about it that that changes a person, and it's really only something you get if you live there for ten or plus years. You know, you you pick it up as your life goes on. So, I think that's what the Jersey blues really is, man. You know, so. When I talk about Jersey in my songs, when when there's a place that I'm talking about in my music, I picture New Jersey. 
you know, and it helps the song come out in in a Jersey blues sound that, you know, I think is kind of kind of going to stick with me for for the rest of my life. You know, that you don't hear a lot of music. If you do, it's rock and roll or it's, um, you know, it's this or that. Why not give a chance in, in the country realm and and the folk realm, you know? So I'm, I'm bringing the Jersey blues to the country scene. I think it'll definitely, I think from what I've heard so far, I think it's really, it's expressing very well. People are understanding it. Um, I've had some people tell me it's the stupidest idea that I ever had. And I've had other people tell me this is, this is really cool, you know, and this is something that you don't hear. And I, I think I'm okay with taking a risk. You know what I mean? I'm okay with taking a risk of, I'm going to try to bring in a new sound while also giving people the stuff that they love. And um, so I'm, I'm, you know, the big thing about the EP is each song has a different sound in it. Each song is, one of them is a honky tonk dancing song, swing country. Another one's more tropical. And I have one that's, you know, a Spanish Western in there. I'm excited to see what songs people like the most and judging by the top three songs out of the five is the type of music I'll continue to work on um, with, you know, little inspiration from the other ones that, that maybe didn't get as much love. So this EP is a big experiment um, for me personally, but I definitely think it, it's definitely going to help me look into the future in a very open-minded way. But all of them in include that Jersey blues sound in which I, I tried to tried to bring out in my music as much as I could. And I'm excited for you guys to really uh, hear it and see how you like it. Well, it's amazing that we all know about the phenomenon about 10, 15 years ago, Jersey Boys, when it all yep. came out in music from Newark with the uh, Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, even though we all love him as a, a phenomenal actor, Joe Pesci, but he actually started in the music business and he was one of the he was one of the roots. Four Seasons, right. But now yep. after all these years, you're bringing this, you know, identity to Jersey, yep. which for me, look, I'm a transplanted New Jersey in two and pe people <laughs> every once in a while pick up my attitude or, you know, yep. uh, you know, different kind of way of speaking, but yes, yeah. there's, I use the term grit. We're gritty. Yeah. It's like the people in Philly, because my, you know, my family's origin from Philly is just, and really yeah. you know, I have family and there's friends that are still in South Philly and yeah. don't leave. And, you know, they have the finances to move and, you know, go to another place, but they want yep. and it's the same thing in Jersey. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's commendable. I think, you know, I, I think you should trademark that. I don't know if it's trademarked yet, <laughs> but I think Jersey be, Blues. I think, yeah, that could be your brand, you know, because you know Jersey Boys was, but Jersey Blues. Hey, if you can, yeah. why not? You know, because yeah. that's you know, your yeah. brand. You know, everything is branding. I think yeah. you know a marketing and branding. So, I yeah. think you really got something there, and just can't wait to finally uh, listen to the uh, yes, sir. To, to the songs. It. I'm excited for everybody to be able to hear them. You're going to hear sounds that you maybe if you heard, maybe you heard before. You're going to hear sounds that maybe you haven't heard before, um, and and that's that's the that's the catch. You know what I mean? There's these songs have some of the greatest musicians I've I've met to date um, in my you know, in, uh, to this time, and um, it, it just the way they presented them, you know, the way they they came up with the things that they did and the way we we got the song out of my head and put it on a record. I hope that translates to you guys in the best way possible. Um, and, you know, I just, I can't wait to release them and see how many people, uh, how people react. That's, that's like the, I'm not nervous about releasing them at all. I'm, I think I'm anxious. I'm anxious to just see how, how they, they read for people and uh, hopefully see where it takes me. Well, obviously you've always crossed your T's and you know dotted the I's for the uh, songwriting and actually the uh, you know, the royalties for these because if they're original compositions, you have to have them you know going through the proper channels once you release them so nobody could take them from you. Yes. You know, so 
I'm sure you've done all that. A lot of people are taking the proper precautions. <laughs> yeah, don't understand the legalese. Oh, I got this song. I'm going to put it out there, but they didn't, you know, copyright it, this, you know, songwriting and all yeah. that, you know, the publishing. So I'm glad you have all that taken care of. Going back to a, a question I asked you a little bit earlier, and I know you didn't, you talked about some other things, but you've been in Nashville a year now, right? Right. 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 Uh, two years. Just been, about two years. All right. And, and performing. What is the reaction you're getting from the, the, the Nashville people? Because obviously you have people yeah. from all over the world going there trying to find, yeah. you know, fame and everything. Yeah. But what's the reaction to your band, your acoustic as of right now, even though you're starting, but yeah. what the initial reaction? I've, I've got a couple uh, little stories here for you um, of incredible moments I've had with fans. Um, a lot of people right now are, if they don't go to the school and they don't know who I am personally, um, they're finding me and they're waiting to see what I come out with. A lot of people are asking, you know, do you have music released? And I tell them very soon and, and they follow me on Instagram and they've been holding. Um, I've had a couple people come out to the shows from the school. Um, but the biggest thing um, for fan, fan base wise, I had this awesome, awesome uh, interaction with the why not community. In the area of Bellevue, there's a lot of local, a lot of local Nashvilleians uh, that live out there, and um, you know they they've been there all their lives, and there wasn't really a music scene out there for they they had to go downtown to go get live music, and a lot of people really wanted it. So the Why Not Saloon, Barry, the man, uh, the gentleman who owns Why Not Saloon, he wanted to bring you know some some music to the west side of town, so he. Uh, he brought it to them, and those people that come out on those Friday nights to go see live music at the Why Not Saloon, they got to see us for the first time on the 9th and 10th of February when we first performed there. And those are people that have come to every single acoustic show. They have told me already they're coming out to the one on the 19th. So to have that opportunity um, for them, just to, just to have them involved, has been really nice. Uh, definitely an older scene of people, but they love what we do, whether it's new stuff or old stuff. Um, I had an older gentleman. His name, his name is Bill, I believe. Bill or Ben? It's but it's Bill, and uh, he comes to all my acoustic shows. And he's an old war vet, um, and his father was a NYPD officer. Um, and so he just you know he talks. He's he was born in Nashville, but his father worked in NYPD. And um, it was just, it just he comes out to all the shows, and he's an older gentleman, and he just, you know, the guy spends his Friday nights at the bar. That's just what he does. And it's people like him who come up to you and they shake your hand, and they tell you things about your performance that make you feel really good about yourself. Um, I know Bill probably can't, probably doesn't have social media, he probably doesn't know how to use it, but it's people like that. Um, you know, he pulls his stops to figure out when I'll be there. And he always, he's always at every show at the Why Not. So there's a, we have a very young fan base going all the way up to a very old fan base. And I'm trying my best to keep up with them all, you know, and, and it's been pretty good. Friends in Low Places, when we did their show, um, for about half of the performance, the first two hours, we had a group all from North Dakota. And one lady was from Canada in that group. So they were just the amount of interaction that they had with us. It was about a group of 15 people. Um, they took this big friend trip to, to Nashville. The amount of interaction that they gave back um, was incredible. And each and every single one of those people followed me on my social medias and has commented and reacted to stuff you know, as I've posted it and to have that kind of reaction now that I know that's just the start of reaching people in a different part of the country that I've never been to yet. I asked them before they left. I said, give me, I said, yell out three, three spots. You all want to see me perform in, in North Dakota. I got the bars names. I got the places names, the, the venues I've written them down. You know, they're on the list for a future tour. You know what I mean? If that's where they want to see me, that's where I'm going to go. Um, 
you know, I'm going to keep up with my fan base wherever it may be. Uh, we also had a group of people from Indiana, I think. I think it was Indiana. Indiana or it'll, it'll, it was Indiana. And um, it was a, like three, three people. And um, they were super, super nice. And they would come up and request songs and, and we would do them. And there was a song that I didn't know, but I said I would try it anyway. I would say I would try it. I just I said, you don't you know you don't got a tip for this one. I I, I don't think it's gonna come out the way you want to hear it. And um, because usually down on Broadway, people tip if they request something, which is super appreciated. But um he comes up and he he starts to put a buck in there, and I said, Look, I said, I don't I don't know this song very well, so it's not gonna sound the way you want it to sound. I said, but I'm gonna try it. I said, but you don't have to put a tip in because I don't want you to waste your money on something you ain't gonna, you know, you might not enjoy. And he said, and he just, he goes, all right, go ahead. You give it a try. I sing the song. It went okay. It went all right. I've, I've never sung it before. He comes up, he drops 20 bucks in there. And he goes, he's like, dude, you're an entertainer. He's like, you don't even have to do it right. He said that you didn't do it that way. It was meant to be. He said, you did it. I had to ask what was the song. It was a, what was the song. It was a Zach Bryan tune. I think it's something in the orange. I think it was. Yeah. And I'm not much of a Zach Bryan fan. It's a newer song. You know, um, I mean, that guy was throwing a lot of different stuff out at me throughout that show. And I was able to, you know, you know pull it out. But um, that Zach Bryan tune, I knew I had to learn it. and I just never did. And because um, he's really popular right now. And um, he just... I did the song. He comes up and he goes, you didn't do it that way. You, you did it the Frankie, Frankie Ray way. And he said, that's all I could have asked for. You know, that, that guy was, it's people like that, that are such a blessing to, to the job. Well, well you know how a new artists sometimes really break through the scene. They do a cover of a popular yep. song. Jason Alvin bam. was turned the page by Bob Seger. There you go. Yep. Well, yeah, man. Well, go ahead. You're in a roll, buddy. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, yeah, you're good, man. But yeah, so um, so yeah, I mean, we just I've had so many great opportunities to meet some awesome, awesome people from around the country um and around the world. I mean, meeting that girl from Canada, she was super cool. Um, and she loved country music, so she was all about it. She was dancing, having a good time with her friends. And you know, we were there was somebody in the house that they didn't know to a couple from South Dakota, South Dakota. And um, they just were picking on them the whole time. So then I, I being in the middle of it was like, all right, all right, we're going to do a poll. Which one's better, North Dakota or South Dakota? You know, and even the people from South Dakota were saying North Dakota was best. So then I was like, where do I got to go? I said, which place is better to perform at? Is it North Dakota or South Dakota? And they were all like, North Dakota, North Dakota. I mean, I've never seen so much love for a state, you know, and, and seeing that made me think back to my love for my state. You know what I mean? That whole idea of the Jersey Cowboy, that's, that's, I only, I only keep up with that because it, it proves that my love for my state, even though I talk trash on Jersey for its taxes and, and all this and that at the end of the day, man, you know, Jersey's my home. Jersey's my place that I want to be 24-7. But I know the best way to to express that love for my home is to go to other people's homes and express, you know, express my love to them and, and let them express their love to, to me of their place. Well, that's a great way to say it, you know, yeah. to their home. You know, that's why, yep. you know, radio commentators and TV commentators back in the day would always say, well, well, thank you for letting me come into your home. I think that's what yep. Johnny Carson actually did on his farewell, yep. when his, his last show. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home every night yep. for the last 30 years. And here you are, a new performer, yep. going to do that. But actually, when you sure. start doing your national tour, I have a couple of places of mine out here in California that would be not even well, a half a mile from here called Puppies and another yeah. place 20 miles away called the Stampede, which is all country. Yeah. And, you know, they have the line awesome. dancing and all that. So but my guitarist ready, is you know, from Modesto. So, you know, that's north. I, it might, that's it north. might be north, but it's, near it's a place. It, it's, 
Yeah, it's a place to stay, right? <laughs> of course. Do a California tour. <laughs> uh, look, it's, you know, you got to start somewhere. And for you, just when I saw you, you went to Nashville and what you want to do, I said, right, correct move. You yeah. know, because the only bad thing about Jersey in the entertainment business, there's no, it's not a hub. Yep. So you have to go somewhere else to get influence. I had to go to the hub. Yeah. I had to go to the headquarters. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that. So just speak a little bit more of the Jersey residency, when it's going to yeah. start, where you're looking yep. to go. If you have any yep. possible locations, I know nothing's really set in stone yet, yeah. but go over that a little bit towards uh, yeah. the conclusion for this time and uh, let everybody yeah. know what's up and coming. Yep. All right. So New Jersey residency, we are kicking off pretty soon, a couple of weeks now. Um, I'll be releasing the dates and the times, the places, all that fun stuff really, really soon. So be on the lookout for that calendar. It'll be right next to the, the Nashville one. So you guys can keep up with both in the New Jersey residency. As of right now, it's going to be a ton of me and my guitar performances. And that is totally okay. I promise you, I do not want you to be deterred by just hearing that it's an acoustic set. We are going to have just as much fun as we would with the full band. There is, there is no right or wrong with, with uh, um, an acoustic performance. So please come check it out. Come have a good time. A lot of these shows are free admission. Um, I'm pretty sure all of them are free admission. So come check it out. Even if you're there for five minutes or you're there for all four hours, three hours, two hours, come check it out. Um, we're also still open and taking uh, you know private event requests and so, stuff like that. So come check that out too. Um, you know, Feel free to reach out. I haven't turned down an event yet, so we've been pretty pretty open-minded and very, very flexible with a lot of people's requests and schedules and stuff like that. So come well, check it out. we got tons of cool stuff. Well, for people who are not originally know the whole map in New Jersey, New Jersey is a pretty big state geographically, yeah. so we're really talking about the southern end of New Jersey, yeah. about 10 miles outside of Philadelphia area. Yep. Camden, Burlington, maybe Gloucester County areas, yep. which is and close to the city. We're open so to go that. down south. We'll go down to the shore. Um, we are in the talks with a couple different places down the shore. So come check out the shore. You know, we'll be down there. Just keep up with the calendar. It will be updated frequently. So come and check it out. By this Jersey Shore, we're looking at uh, yes. the southern part, Cape May, yep. uh, Sea Isle City, uh, Stone Harbor. Uh, all the places because yeah. Christian City is dry, uh, Summers Point, yeah. places like that. And yeah. you mentioned the one place that you do have on the calendar already, which is July 21st. And you said yeah. the Gold Nugget, and I thought it was yeah. the casino in Atlantic City. Yeah. So now it's <laughs> far, far in Berlin, yeah. correct? Yep. Yeah, the, the that's Gold the Nugget I believe date, is the one. That's the only confirmed date right now, correct? That's the only one that's on the calendar on the website. There's a ton of other confirmed dates. We just haven't released them yet. Um, which will be soon. It'll be this week at some point. Um, once I lock in and and release it, I'm going to double check that that July 21st date is in fact the Golden Nugget. Yep. Yes. July 21st is the Golden Nugget, one to four um, p.m. and that's the one in Berlin. So yes, be sure to come casino, check it out. Not the casino, not not the casino in Atlantic City. <laughs> But if but anybody knows anybody from the casino, please reach out. Yeah, you know. <laughs> eventually you get there. Well, Frankie, I appreciate you coming back on for number three yeah, and course, fantastic buddy. success up until that. But I think you know so, uh, you're finishing up school. Yep. In the next it's couple of weeks, doing, and then going yeah. in back to Jersey is going to be great. And if I ever have the opportunity to maybe go back for a little bit, maybe we yeah. could do a Carl's Corner live somewhere course, in Jersey. Buddy. That'd be kind of cool. You do it at Sam's buddy. Pizza in Wildwood. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sounds sounds good. Right I'm gonna go on a diet before I go back. You know. I know. Right? <laughs> uh, diet's my middle name. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So it's now probably the one we'll do in May. You might be back and uh, yeah. back in Jersey. And if uh, yep. You know, if so, you know, you could have you know anybody there. Maybe some you know family. We could go. Yeah. Know, see if my there, uncle wants to do it. Forth. Oh, that would be phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, if he could get a sponsor. Go up to the Philly Diner and like go in the park and did yeah. set up there. Like, hey, we're at the Philly Diner promoting yeah. Frankie, you know, when we were for Carl's Corner. So yeah. there's a lot of little promotional things could be done there too. But uh, that that's 
good to look forward to. Maybe we could plan yeah. uh, for next month, maybe the middle of next month. So you're going back, what, the first week of May? Yeah, just around the first week. And we're kicking off performances for private events, I think, like the second weekend. So I'm getting ready for all those right now. Oh, cool. We'll be uh, in touch and maybe set something up. Yes, and if sir. you see anything like that, we could set up there. All they yeah. need is good internet, you know, for a good yeah. Wi-Fi so your laptop could work. So in closing, good, what else do you want to say before we'll we wrap this up and uh, you get into the end of the month? Again, thank you for having me. Thank you guys for the love and support on these podcasts. Um, I know a lot of my friends and family come in and check out the podcast. So thank you guys for coming in. Um, and doing that. And also thank you to all Carl's fans and such uh, for showing support on my end and, um, and just having me back here. It, it, it's good to hear that you guys are enjoying listening to, you know, my big mouth talk for about an hour or so. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to being back in May. So yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. And the only thing I asked for, because I'm, you know, everybody's saying, Oh, and I have so many, you know, subscribers on my YouTube page. I barely just hit a yeah. hundred. So anybody's up there, yeah. you know, that uh, we want to uh, go there. And if you like, you know, like, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Make sure you like subscribe. Make sure you do it. There it is. Look at it down there. <laughs> yeah. Like, and subscribe it. to my, that's pretty much yeah. my YouTube channel where a lot of this is going to be on there. So, uh, Hey, Frankie, I appreciate you coming back on again. Is there anything we missed? Is there anything we missed? Think, think a little bit. Maybe I forgot this or forgot that. Did we, think, did we miss I anything? Think, well, we got Friends in Low Places April 29th. We got Why Not Saloon this Friday. We got the the Writers Round at the Curb Calf on, on Saturday. And then, you know, last acoustic set at the Why Not on the 26th. I think I think we got everything. And just be on the lookout for, for the release dates and, and the new the Jersey residency calendar. So, yeah. So well, yeah, I think, like that, I I think we got it. And, and we talk about anything else comes up. In, oh, yeah. That'll be a separate one all on its own. But see, yeah. when we do food, we're going to be in Jersey with food around yeah. us. We got it. What we'll do what we is we'll, we'll pick up stuff from, from a couple different places, do some food yes. reviews. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you coming back on. Yeah. And uh, be, next time we talk, and like I said, anything comes up in the meantime, you want to pop on real fast, we could do it. You know, yeah. we have some exciting announcements. I do appreciate you doing the TikTok and the Instagram about this yeah. and just say it's actually on Carl Condolo's YouTube page, but under gotcha. Carl's corner so they could check it Carl's and we'll do that. Gotcha. And gotcha, uh, probably it's around what? It's two o'clock your time, three o'clock Eastern, maybe within maybe the dinner hour, maybe six, seven o'clock Eastern. I'm going to yeah. post it everywhere. So perfect. Thank you. I appreciate number three and I can't course, wait to number four then to be back in Jersey. So anything, Eric, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, yep. everybody. Thank you, buddy. <laughs>